Very good. Thank you so much. I appreciate the introduction. Before I go ahead and share a little bit, I do want to share my screen and make sure you guys can all hear me and see my screen. So hang tight for one second. Make sure we can get this up and running. Oops. Are you able to see this in full screen or is it still small with on? Full screen? I see, I mean, we see the main slide and then I can see the thumbnails underneath. Is that what you mean? I don't want you guys to see the thumbnail. Let's see if we can do that. Better? There you go. Wonderful. Well, thank you guys for your patience. Technology is not always my friend, but activity is. So we'll get started today. You're in the right place if you're here for Zoom and Boot Camp. We're going to talk today about being active. Just a little bit about me and why you might want to listen to me today or why I'm here. Um, I am, like John said, the new on-site data care wellness coordinator. I'm also a health coach. I'm a personal trainer. I'm a behavior specialist. I'm a pet mom. I'm a kickboxing enthusiast. And most importantly, today, I am a lunch break author. And you'll find out like that. So let's jump into whoops, what we'll be covering today. And on this, our agenda today, we're just going to talk a little bit about what physical activity is and what exercise is. There is a difference. The benefits of movement and activity overall the different types of exercises, and then the recommendations. At the end of this, you will be able to see yourself out and results. So definitely take some notes along the way, stand up and move along, and do whatever works best for you. So throughout this presentation, I did build a few movement breaks. I promise, John said I'm not going to make you get up and do any jumping jacks, but we all are basically sitting in a sedentary position, myself included. So I just wanted to encourage everybody to have the opportunity and invite you all to just take movement breaks throughout this presentation. It'll be about 30 to 40 minutes, right? And so we want to make sure that we're getting up and moving throughout not only this presentation, but for our day-to-day -day life, right? And these are just some of the reasons. It's swelling, right? It adds physical activity and stress into our day. It helps us improve our focus and it promotes a better work-life balance. So it's super important for us to do that. And so I just want to invite you to participate in just a small office group. You don't have to leave the comfort of your chair. You don't have to stand up. You might like to. But these are just a couple of options that you can do. And I just always like to start a presentation with sort of like an engaging activity. So feel free to join me if you would like. If not, totally okay. Two in a time, we'll all take a second, breathe, uh, go grab a drink of water, take some steps. But basically an office stretch, what I like to do is just sit nicely planted in my chair, an opportunity for me to step away from my computer for a second and just start with some neck rolls. You can even turn your head side to side here. Just relaxing the body a little bit, getting some movement in. Maybe you take it down and you shrug the shoulders back and forth, loosening up that upper body. And thank you for those that are participating with me. Might as well, you're here today, right? <laughs> and still in that seated position. If you wanted to stand up, you could, but I'm going to stay stuck in my chair. I'm just going to go ahead and cross my arms over and under. I like to think about this when I tug myself, love myself. Definitely doesn't take too much time, but it loosens up my body. And then we'll just turn side to side here, a nice little back stretch. Some of you might hear your back crack. And we'll just take one deep breath in and out. Very good. Simple movement breaks. That's a nice ankle stretch. Other great things, especially if you're tied to your computer, is just go ahead and take your hand and just flex that backwards right there like that. Nice office stretch I always like to do. And so definitely take some time as I encourage those movement breaks throughout the day. Thank you again. So let's talk a little bit about what we're going to talk about in terms of physical activity. We're going to go over physical activity in the today. So when we think of physical activity, I want you to think of anything. So big picture, anything that gets your, your body moving. Literally what we just did. That's physical activity, right? Anything that gets our body moving and physical, regular physical activity. It helps us to feel, function, sleep better, and basically maintain our overall health and well-being. You can see here that on the slide, physical activity has a bunch of different components, exercise being one of those things, right? And exercise is a type of physical activity. And oftentimes we interchange those words and they're not necessarily the same thing, right? So exercise tends to be structured and planned, it's repetitive, and it involves like improving our physical fitness, right? So it has a goal at the end of that outcome of being an improved physical fitness. Now, if we don't know what physical fitness is, how will we know where we even start with exercise? <laughs> so what's physical fitness? And just physical fitness, think about it as your ability to carry out daily 
um, have stamina and enjoy things in your leisure time, right? Without feeling winded of walking up the steps or maybe going out to take a hike, right? Or just take a walk around the block. It's really just gaining that physical fitness. And think about that as your body's endurance, right? So activities, that big broad picture, anything that gets your body moving, exercises, that structured plan, um, methodical way of moving your body, and then physical fitness would be that outcome we're trying to achieve. Now you'll see this thing at the bottom here, which is called you. It's not a new concept, but it's not talked about as much as physical activity or um, structured exercise. So I do want to bring it to your awareness. And me is just non-exercise activity thermogenic. And what that means is that's just any energy expended, so any calories expended, doing anything besides sleeping, eating, or sports-like exercise. So basically, when we think of me, I want you to think of move more and sit less. How can we embed movement into our day-to-day -day so that we don't have to be super tied to a structured activity if we can't do that all the time? So these are just a bunch of different ways that we can get physically active and improve. Next, we'll talk about exercise and diabetes. And I do want to highlight that all physical activity, no matter what, even if it's a little, it's better than anything, but it does impact our blood glucose and our overall health and well-being. So that's especially important for this particular training and for this program for you to know, right? So being active does help bring your glucose back to those target ranges or close here, right? So that's what, it's exactly what you're trying to do here with um, just learning a little bit more about diabetes and physical activity. And then in addition to moving your body more, other lifestyle changes, we want to help um, increase our wellness overall, right? It helps us with strengthening our muscles and our longevity, which is our bones, just our endurance, right? And it does increase our calorie burn, which helps with weight loss and weight gain. And so again, basically, I really want you to, the key take, take away for me today would be to move more and to sleep less. So let's take an opportunity, if you would like to, to just get into some seated aerobics. What does this look like in the office? Maybe you work on the floor. Um, maybe you could do it standing. And I want you to just do this as I present in the next slide, if you choose. I'm inviting you to do that. So basically, you can just mark it right there, right? You can start some questions out there. You can just step from side to side, make it fun and make it enjoyable. But that gives an opportunity for you to just move throughout the day. Again, me, not exercise activity. Moving more and sitting less. Let's talk about the benefits of exercise. When we think of exercise, we think of it in a traditional way that it helps us boost our mood, which it does. It sharpens our focus and it helps us out. It helps with reducing stress and it even improves your sleep, right? But how does this relate to the diabetes component? Well, it helps lower our risk for heart disease. In addition to all of these things, it also helps burn glucose, which helps improve the way insulin works in our body, right? So that's essential for this particular program here. I always like to talk about the other side effects as well because those things come full circle. So not only in addition to boosting your mood, sharpening your focus, helping with the glucose, right? It does help improve our mood and sleep and just slows the effect, right? And helps with our physical fitness. Now, this picture is kind of funny, but it's the truth, right? When we think of physical fitness, we're like, yeah, we can totally create a plan something that works for me, but life happens, obstacles come up and challenges, you know, present themselves and we're faced with um, making decisions, basically things that get in our way of achieving our goals. And you'll see here that this guy has a no excuse mindset. He's got his dog on his back and he's like, forget it, I'm gonna stick to this today. Um, I set a goal and I'm gonna stick to it. But oftentimes when we, we talk about physical fitness, people fail with those goals because A, they don't either have the knowledge, the motivation to get started, maybe they don't have the time, maybe it feels very time consuming or a lot of energy will have to go into this. And instead we lean into food or maybe making alterations with our food, which is a positive. When you think of wellness as a whole, all of these things have to work together. Um, and then this last one here, when we think of fitness or these fitness goals, oftentimes they're not broken down into actionable or manageable steps. So they feel really overwhelming for somebody and it's really easy to push that to the back burner. Other common obstacles can look like, like I said, time, maybe education, knowledge or support. Maybe you don't know what to do at the gym. Maybe you're feeling intimidated. Um, the motivation to even get started, like why am I doing this? What is the purpose behind it? Even maybe you don't know what your interests are. Maybe you think you might like pickleball or kickboxing or maybe taking a dance class, but you're not exactly sure. And then maybe you just have some limitations or restrictions, maybe you know, provided by your doctor, or you just know your body best, you're the expert in your body, 
maybe you just feel like um, fitness isn't it isn't a fit for you because you have some restrictions, which is not always the case. That's where exercise might come into play. Um, and I just want you to kind of think on this one. Are there any other obstacles in your particular situation outside of the ones that I discussed that really do get in the way of you achieving the goals that you're looking for in terms of your physical fitness or well-being? Again, going to invite you to do a movement break here. When we think of this, um, this particular picture, I was encouraging people to kind of just get up and do more strength training exercises. And we'll go ahead and talk a little bit about that. But a typical strength training exercise that you could easily do in your office would be just a squat. Utilizing your chair, making sure that if it does have rollers on the bottom, that it's nice and stable, or you can use a static chair, something that doesn't do. And all you need to do is stand up and sit down. Super basic squat. If you want to challenge yourself, just let those glutes hover over top of the top of your chair, standing up and down. You can do reps of 10, take a quick break, and then move on, right? So maybe setting a timer to go out there just that often in your office or every hour, you just get up and move for a minute, just making sure that you're moving more and less. Again, concept of solution. So let's talk a little bit about the types of exercise, right? There's going to be four types of exercise. And I can't see the chat, but it looks like there are some people in the chat. Okay, very good. Um, so there are four different types of exercise that we will review today. We have aerobic, strength training, flexibility, and balance, right? So all of these are different types of exercise in terms of category, okay? So has anybody participated in any type of these exercises? You can throw me a thumbs up. You can type it in the chat. Do you know anything about these exercises? Yeah, cool. So let's learn a little bit about these. I can proceed to my next slide. So I tried to match some pictures with what these particular categories are. These types of exercises. So when you think of aerobic, aerobic exercise, I want you to think of the word. Okay. So aerobic is basically this physical activity that helps increase our heart rate, so speeds up our heart rate and our breathing. Right. It's sort of out of breath. We're definitely more breathy. Um, and our body's use of oxygen increases. So when you think of aerobic, I want you to think oxygen. And what we're doing here is our, our muscles use our blood sugar to fuel, which is great for this particular presentation. And then it also does help with cardiovascular conditions. So when you think of aerobic, I want you to think of oxygen and cardiovascular conditions. A lot of um, aerobic exercises tend to be like people think of running, right, or running really quickly. Um, but there's fairly different ways that you can do this, and you want to get creative with it. It could be anything from a light movement, something that's super hard, maybe just a light brisk walk, all the way up to a rapid sprint, right? That's a cardiovascular aerobic style. Now, here are just a few examples, right? Brisk walking, we have swimming, cycling, rowing, dancing, even water aerobics. Right. So does anybody participate or can they name um, maybe an aerobic exercise that they've either done in the past or they know about or maybe they're interested in? They don't have to type it, but kind of just think to yourself, do I know of an aerobic exercise that may interest Or just pick one of these from the list, right? Now, we know a little bit about aerobic exercise just from the 30 seconds I showed it here, but I want you to think about, well, how much aerobic exercise should I be getting throughout my day? Well, what is that? Well, how do I actually plan for aerobic exercise, right? And so the CDC is recommending that we aim for about 30 to 60 minutes each day. And that might feel incredibly overwhelming for some people. And for some of you on here, that might seem incredibly doable, right? And so we do have to make this work for you. So basically the recommendation is about 150 minutes and you can chunk that as you please. A lot of people like to do 30 minutes a day just to make it more manageable. Remember, we talked about that bigger goal being to chunk into actionable items. That's a great way to do that. Or maybe you set um, a timer to go off every hour and you're able to get some um, walking in just to lead up to the 150 minutes. Now, we do want to try and avoid going two consecutive days without activity, without movement in general just because it is really difficult to get back into a routine, right? And we do want to make sure that we're being consistent with this over time. And the more that we repeat it, the more that we practice it, the more of a habit it does become. 
Now, you will receive this slide deck and you will receive information attached to it, but you'll see here that I've provided just some examples that you can take a look at from the American Heart Association. And they're just quick videos that you can go through on your own if you're not exactly sure where to get started, even after this presentation. And again, like I said, just get creative with it. You can see here that this mom or this parent is dancing with their kiddo and they're just having some aerobic fun right in their living room. Maybe you dance with some commercials, Maybe you grab your kiddos because you're super busy and you do this fun family workout, but just try and make it something that's enjoyable and something that you will want to do and see what our creative team. So that's all about aerobic exercise. Remember, just quick takeaways I want you to think about. Increases your heart rate, use of oxygen, cardio balance. Then we have strength training, okay? And these are activities that work against an opposing force. When people think of strength training, sometimes they get intimidated by the majority of the clients that I work with often get intimidated here. Probably because we are not educated on this, right? We don't have a lot of knowledge about this. It is intimidating to be in the gym. Maybe if you've never been in there, maybe you don't know how to utilize the machines or the equipment, right? But strength training really helps us um, with increasing lean body mass and also helps with our metabolism. And so for anybody in terms of weight management or weight loss, this is going to be really key for you. Um, oftentimes, women especially stray away from the strength training component and really lean into just a little bit, just the cardiovascular. But this is equally, if not more, again, primary here would be to get uh, to move and stress. But it's important to understand what understand what strength training is and how it benefits you. Now, when we strength train, we typically are lifting until our muscles are fatigued or they're sore or they're tired, right? Um, but what counts as strength? training? You'll see here that this guy is doing a test press. That's just an example of a strength training test. And he has dumbbells in his hand, right? And he is resisting gravity. He's going against gravity. And so that's exactly what strength training does. You can use hand weights. You can also call dumbbells. You can use your resistance bands, which come in multiple different shapes and sizes and anything out there in the world of the internet you can buy now. Um, they have hand weights and they have equipment actually just set up for resistance style training and workout training. You can also utilize weight machines in the gym. Maybe you attend a, 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 like a global gym, maybe like an Apple Fitness or something around that style, Planet Fitness Punch. They have access to tons and tons of machines which also work against that resistance. And then lastly, I always like to highlight if you don't have a gym membership or you don't have any equipment or you're not exactly sure where to get started, you always have this thing right here, which is attached to you, your body. So you can use your body at any point in time to do any type of strength training. So when we think of strength training, I want to make some recommendations based off the CDC about what to shoot for. If we don't have a goal, we don't have anywhere to shoot our dart on the dartboard, how will we know? So this would be your aim. So you want to aim to include about two to three non-consecutive days of strength training. So you don't want to typically strength train or weight lift or, you know, use resistance style training on um, two days in a row. So let's just say, for example, Monday and Tuesday were your days to exercise at the gym. You may choose to do one day of strength training, cardiovascular and bed in between, skip that Tuesday and do another strength training that's Wednesday. The recommendation would be to just skip a day in between and try and make them not just so your body has time to repair and recover. Now, when you see here, we tend to start with a lighter weight. <coughs> Excuse me. If you're relatively newer to lifting or you've never really tried any type of resistance training, you might want to just start out by lifting 10 to 15 pounds. Maybe for this particular scenario, you see this guy on this bench here. He goes ahead and he pushes for 10 to 15 reps and he assesses his level of effort or how much energy it took him to do it, right? How difficult was this exercise? He repeats that and then he builds his way up to an, a challenging or an effortful eight to 10 or eight to 12 reps here. Um, and, and that's something that you can work on and that is a little bit unfamiliar if you are newer to exercise and that's okay, right? But there are, are people out there that do want to help you. We have exercise specialists, we have personal trainers in most gyms, um, health coaches can even help with things like this. But it is important for something like strength training, especially to check with your doctor if you have any history of any condition or something that may be um, a, a restriction or a limitation before getting started. And if you are somebody that wants to get started and you need to learn a little bit about it, 
learning and understanding proper mechanics is going to be key with working um, with an expert in, in exercise. So do any strength training exercises stand out to anybody here? Can you think of any strength training exercises or something that you may be able to incorporate into your own um, programming? I don't have to mention it here, but I do want you to think about it because at the end, you're going to get some homework. So just start thinking now. And again, if you're not exactly sure where to start, this is brand new to you, that's okay. I provided some examples here as well for strength. So let's go ahead and just talk a little bit about, um, I'm sorry, I forgot what the slide was in here. So no waste, no problem, right? Like I said, um, the best form for you to do and for you to get started would be to use your body weight. Maybe you don't have a gym membership yet. You're not sure if you want to come in. Uh, maybe you don't have exercise equipment. But you can certainly use your body at any point in time. It's always attached to you to do any of these popular body weight exercises. So lunges are typically a great way to build that lower body, with including with squats. And I showed you a quick demonstration of how to just incorporate that into your day-to-day -day movement in the office, right? We can do wall sits and hold there, hold uh, against the wall for stability as well. High knees, which also helps with increasing cardiovascular. We can do push-ups, whether it's from the floor, or off of your desk, off of the wall. There's a ton of ways to modify these exercises. And my all-time favorite, I know I'm probably crazy to say this, but I love a good burp. Um, and again, I did put some examples here for all of you because I do want you to be able to practice this in real time and find some body weight exercises and modifications that do work for you. So that's all in terms of strength. Let's move next to the different uh, to the next exercise type, which would be flexibility, which looks very different than any type of cardiovascular or strength training. And flexibility is just an exercise that flexes or stretches on muscles. So in the beginning, when I went and I held this stretch right here, that is flexibility, right? It helps our to increase our elasticity and our range of motion. So super important. Um, if you are 65 or older, they're going to definitely recommend that you do this more frequently, especially with balance, which will be our next one. But we want to talk about why we do flexibility and what that looks like. So it does not only um, increase our elasticity, our range of motion, but it helps prevent injury. Right? And so oftentimes we don't stretch and we don't take time to care for our bodies. It's often the easiest thing to overlook. Um, or we get stretching confused. We say, okay, I'm going to stretch before I do an exercise. Really, we want to stretch. So we want to do more dynamic movements, things that keep our body moving, maybe more of the hugging yourself, loving yourself, tapping the back prior to exercise, and more of the stretching where we're holding after an exercise, not just after. So these are some things that count as flexibility. We have stretching like that seated twist, an overhead reach, some of the examples I just showed you. And then yoga is a great way to practice flexibility. Now we want to aim to do this in just a few minutes a day. So think about setting a five minute timer to go off every single day in your office and maybe incorporating it on the weekends. Just five minutes of your day could really change the way that your body interacts with itself and your overall well-being and improve your physical fitness, right? Um, we want to try and hold those stretches from anywhere to 10 to 30 seconds. If it's painful, don't go that far, right? But just hold it in a challenging position. And we do want to try and repeat that about two to four times. And again, um, we have examples here for you because we want you to be able to practice this in real time. And if this is new to you, we want to be able to give you some tips. So start thinking about what flexibility options might stand out to you, whether it's yoga, yoga with Maybe it's a nice uh, chair stretch you can do in the office. Maybe something you can easily do from the house, right, or at home. And then this last one is going to be balance. And balance exercises are often overlooked along with flexibility. We tend to think of physical fitness as just this high intensity, like this movement training, right? But we really want to focus on balance because it helps us not only strengthen our muscles, but it helps us keep our um, the stability, right? It prevents risk of falls, and it does help us work on coordination. Um, and again, as we get older, this is going to be a recommendation from the CDC that is something that you do continue to practice over time. Now, you're probably like, well, what counts as balance exercises, right? Do I have to walk on a line? Well, that could be an option, right? But you can also just try standing on one leg and holding it up for up to 60 seconds. Now, maybe that's a long-term goal. Maybe you just shoot for five seconds and then incrementally work your way up five, 10, 15, all the way to 60 seconds. Maybe you even challenge yourself a little bit and close your eyes, but make sure there's something close by to hold on to. 
You can also try some yoga poses. In addition to them not only being um, help with flexibility and strength training, they also help with balance. And again, walking on the line, or you see some people in the gym, or um, some of you may own balance boards that you could do at home. Um, again, I want to just make sure when I am recommending balance training that you do have something to hold on to if you are unstable, but that you often do this in an uncluttered area. Um, that way you are definitely. But we do want to aim to practice these about two to three times a week. Again, if you're not sure where to start, we have examples for you right here in the slide. So let's take a little bit of a movement break. This will be our last movement break. And I want to challenge you, if you have the opportunity and the option, just to get up out of your chair, just like this. If you have a desk in front of you, just try and stand on one leg as I talk. Okay? If not, Try at a later date and time, but it's a nice way to kind of just practice something in your day. Maybe while you're um, hosting a Zoom call or you, you don't have to be present or maybe you just grab a colleague and you do a little challenge in your office place. But definitely incorporate these. And remember, we're trying to um, move more and stick less. So let's move into the exercise recommendations. I did share a little bit about what that looks like. How many times should we do this? What should we be doing, right? These are the exercise recommendations from the CDC and something that you're definitely gonna to wanna to take a look at. At the end of this presentation, you're going to be um, shown a, a homework assignment, basically, something that you can do an action item. So paying attention to what we're recommending will help you build that action item out so that you can get started today. So let me move this here. So you'll see here the recommendations for physical activity or exercise. So remember we said we want to have at least 150 minutes. You can break that up in whichever way, shape, or form that looks like for you, okay? Especially if you're getting started, I want you to just think of something that might bring you joy. Maybe it's dancing. Maybe it's walking with a colleague, right? Fitness doesn't have to be so, you know, black and white. It doesn't have to fit in this box that we put ourselves in and, and just stay in here. Right? I want you to have some fun with it, but really try and focus on getting to that ultimate goal of about 150 minutes. Maybe you just start with 30 minutes, start now. Maybe you move and incrementally build your way up, but 150 minutes would be that. And again, moderate to intensity aerobic activity, and you'll see this list in the CDC and additional um, exercises that you can do there, would just be anything that gets your heart beat up, right? That gets your heart beat moving. And so we do want to do that at least 150 minutes. But remember, I told you strength training is also important here. So in addition to that aerobic conditioning exercise, we also want to incorporate this strength training. So we want to do anything that makes our muscles work harder. And remember, that was twice a week that we do that. If you need assistance with that, definitely reach out to an exercise professional. They would be more than happy to help guide you. But there are going to be resources embedded throughout this slide that if you were just wanted to get started and try some things out on your own, you could certainly do that because we want to set you up for success. Just some quick tips here. So when you're getting started, just start simple, right? Maybe 150 minutes a week feels really overwhelming to you. Just pick a number that feels reasonable. Maybe take a look at your schedule. Uh, maybe it's taking a walk at lunch. I told you I was an avid uh, lunch walker. That's a good time for me to embed some movement in my day to get some of my 150 minutes to count. Um, maybe you're somebody that needs to get started with a friend or you just need like a support group. Maybe grabbing a colleague or doing a walking or maybe you join a group exercise. That way it's A, motivating to come and you're inspired by others around you, but you have a professional in front of you to help you make these progress. Oftentimes they have really uplifting music too, so it's a nice social gathering as well. And just check in with yourself and check in with your health. If you're not feeling well, make sure that you go to the doctor. Check in with yourself and make sure that if you need to stretch that you do, right? And that you are sticking to the plan that you have come up with yourself that works best for you. And then lastly, kind of dig a little bit deeper. Why am I? What are the purposes? Is it only to help with preventing diabetes? Or is it only to help with preventing diabetes? Can I dig a little bit deeper? Can I dig into my why and say, well, I'm a new grandma. I want to be physically fit and active so that I can spend the next 10, 20 years with my grandkids. I want to be able to run them. I'm, a, I'm, I'm, I'm trying to conceive, right? I want to make sure that I'm staying active as somebody that's trying to get pregnant or whatever stage or season of life you're in. I want you to dig just a little bit deeper from that why, and not just associate it with avoiding any condition. Maybe it's running an ultra marathon. Maybe it's finishing a 5K. Maybe it's getting to 
8,000 steps a day. Whatever it is for you, I want you to dig just a little bit deeper there. So those are the quick recommendations. But you'll see here in this graphic that every day, we wanna just start doing things that help us to move more and sit less. So basically, let's ditch the elevator and run the steps, okay? So we do some more household chores like gardening or laundry or cleaning, things that get us up and moving more. Um, I often think about things that I can do every day. Maybe I'm binge watching Netflix series in between commercials or seasons or episodes or whatever that might look like. Can I just get up and move around? Um, or maybe I embed like an exercise equipment or machine in and in the room that I'm able to, to, to still partner and, and watch that movie or that activity, right? Um, at the same, do that activity at the same time. Now, again, every day we can do walking, we can do this through walking meetings, we can take a lunch break walk, we can walk early, walk before or after, we can walk on meetings. There's a ton of ways to embed this throughout your day. And again, if you have a dog like I do, walking the dog. Yeah. Not only does it make you happy, but it makes you happy. So about three to five days a week, you want to do something like cycling, swimming, brisk walking, right? That's that cardiovascular move, jogging, a sports-like activity. Maybe you play tennis, right? So those are things that you want to do about three to five days. Then we have something that's two to three days a week, which would be your flexibility, right? That, um, that strength training, the body weight exercise strength training in the gym, maybe working with a personal trainer. And then at the top here, exactly what I keep saying, we want to limit, limit inactivity and set work to do, right? So we ultimately want to sit less and move more every single day. So this is just a nice little graphic. Um, I would like, if I was brand new to exercise or didn't want to get started while I was just starting out, this would be a great graphic to jot out to start to plan out what would make um, most sense for me. So again, let's just come full circle here, here and talk a little bit more about sitting less, moving more, what is new, right? So here are just a couple of ways at work right now, most of you are at work, that you can move more during the day at work. Some recommendations would be just get up every 30 minutes and, and take a walk or take a quick stretch. How simple is it to just set a calendar reminder in or calendar, um, maybe on your Teams or even on your phone, something that you always have with you, to just get up every 30 minutes, just take a little walk right? Or take a stretch. Maybe you encourage your team, maybe you're a leader or you, you know, you work with colleagues and you take walking. Maybe you don't need to be on camera and you just say, hey, I'm going to take a walking meeting today. I'm going to be present. I'm going to be here, but I'm going to use the next 15 to 20 minutes as an opportunity for me to get some more steps in. Um, oftentimes I meet with colleagues this way and I coach clients this way as well. It's a great way for us to do two things at once while still being present with each other. Um, and again, I encourage you to take those movement breaks. And I, I gave you a few quick examples. It could be anything from that aerobic to that cardio, uh, to the cardiovascular aerobic, it could be strength training with your body weight at work, it could be balance or flexibility. But you could take all of those movement breaks at work or throughout and embed it in your work day. And then again, remember we had already mentioned something like instead of taking the elevator, maybe I'll take the stairs. Maybe that feels really overwhelming for you to take the stairs all the way up to the eighth floor. Well, what if I encourage you to stand? What if I took the elevator up to the eighth floor and I took the stairs down? Okay, what if I just started there? Or what if I took the elevator to the seventh floor and I walked up to that eighth floor? What if we just broke these up into incremental things that I could do every single day? And again, just setting reminders, like setting a stand-up reminder, or if you have an Apple Watch or a Garmin or something that um, tracks your movement or your, a device, and most likely it's going to tell you, hey, you haven't gotten up for a while, and really pay attention to those cues. So those are a couple things you can do at work. Let's talk about some things that you can do at home or honestly anywhere. Right? You can do an activity or a chore during your commercial break, something I already shared. Maybe you're binge watching a Netflix series and you pause it every so often to just do a couple of movements. Or you have that planned commercial break, you know, it's about four to five minutes. Maybe you can do just some stretching or movement on the then. One of my favorite things to do, especially with new people who are getting into movement, is pair a desired activity with them. So like I mentioned, maybe you like a show and you really, really love the show. You've been binge watching Game of Thrones if you were like me. And instead of sitting on my couch, I could have put a bike in my uh, bike in that room, right? A stationary bike. And maybe I could have gotten my cardiovascular help on. Or maybe I could just take a couple of minutes and I could just pair it with something like a stretching exercise, 
So while I was doing something that I really enjoyed, I could also be doing movement. A lot of people like to listen to music, they play or download audiobooks, podcasts, right? So think about something that you really enjoy and start pairing it with movement so that it becomes more enjoyable. And then this one here, re reducing screen time, which can be really difficult, especially if you're like me, I'm glued to my computer for the majority of, of my day. Um, but getting outside and in nature more, that's oftentimes why I take a lunch break walk because I'm stuck in these four walls, right? And we know that that's just good for our overall health and well-being. And then this one here would be schedule and plan structured activities. So based on the recommendation from the previous slide, how can you actually plan for movement, right? How can you plan for exercise? And what does that look like in your day-to-day -day life that feels balanced and it feels reasonable and manageable? So a couple of opportunities while commuting. I know this might seem strange to some of you, but you could try taking public transportation. And if you're on public transportation, whether it's on a plane, uh, I'm not on a plane, whether it's on a train or maybe a bus, maybe you stand if it's possible, right? Typically on a plane. Um, but maybe we park further away and that's something that you can do every single day while you're commuting, right? Instead of, you know, looking for that parking spot, that prime time parking spot, you take 10 minutes to look for, just park that extra couple, you know, uh, spots away and, and make it an opportunity for you to get some more steps in and challenge yourself, right? And then lastly, this one's super key would be to wear supportive and comfortable shoes or even just um, leisure wear when you're doing something, right? Like athletic wear. That way you're, you're comfortable. If you're not comfortable, you're not going to do it. And you can go ahead and you can find um, supportive sports stores that help you with fitting shoes if that's something that is interesting to you. So if you're walking to work, that's definitely um, something that you'll want to take a, take a look at. But so you can see here that there's just a variety of different ways that we can sit more, sit less and move more, which is going to be the key to Finding something that you can do. So I have attached a ton of resources to this slide that we done because I did want to bring you some awareness. We have a Gator Care website, and this will take you right there, that does offer live workout classes, exercise classes, that are recorded, and these are all free to you, which is if it's free for me, check it out and see what might stand out, right? Um, there's also challenges in there, and monthly we host walking challenges. So maybe you're interested, maybe you can grab a friend, or maybe your department is interested, and you guys can make it together. So over here in employee wellness, we also have ongoing programs. We have nutrition counseling, health coaching, and we do have an on-site YMCA. So if you're down here at the Jackson Mill location, that's something that you can take a look at, and or if you're off campus, look for a gym that's close to your work and try and get the before or after. That way you don't have to at home. And then these are just some apps that I recommend um, while health coaching. Some of them are free, some of them would be paid, but take a look at some of them. Some of them are, are helpful with both nutrition and exercise. So it really would just be what you're looking for. The Spurkit app has a ton of searching exercises and fitnesswonder.com has a ton of ways that you can do your cardiovascular exercise and incorporate strength training movements with somebody you can use. Somebody you can use. As an exercise professional, that's super important to me, especially as you're a teenager new. You wanna make sure that you're doing things correctly and you're not further injuring yourself. And then if you do have any other questions or you're just intrigued and you want to learn a little bit more about how we can help you with your physical fitness, this is our contact information. And then lastly, let's just end with some takeaways. So remember, you want to talk to your doctor first, make sure that they're clear before you start doing any type of physical exercise, but walking is a great way to get started. You want to keep it simple and make it fun, make it work for you in your season of life. What works for me doesn't always work for you. Maybe finding a partner or support group to get you started, motivated, a little bit of that competitive edge. We want to build a plan. So we, we don't want to just like throw something at the wall and hope it sticks, right? We want to try things out. We want to you know, take time for us. We want to set goals. Maybe 150 minutes is our ultimate goal, right? But before we, we can get there, we've got to get to 30 minutes. Then we've got to get to 60 minutes, right? And then we can get to that 150. So we want to set goals. And you can also work with a health coach to help you do that. You will also want to make sure that you're monitoring your blood sugar throughout super important, especially for this series. And you want to track your progress and always, always, always. And then lastly, I will leave you with an activity. I won't even call it homework. I'll leave you with an activity. Something for you to go out and get started with today. So we do want you to review the CDC website. It's everything that I went over today. And um, I will attach that link here just so you can get some more tips and information, also discuss ways to overcome some of the challenges that we discussed in the beginning. But 
basically, I want you to review that and then I want you to create a physical activity. If you do need help with that, we do have home pages on campus or through Gator Care. That's you. And then we want you to maintain that physical activity diary. We want you to give it a shot. We want to see where your physical activity level is at. And remember that the most important thing for you to do right now is sit less. So thank you all for attending today's um, you know, presentation on physical activity. I hope that you were able to learn a little bit of knowledge about what movement looks like and how that can be for you. The next session will be on 511, I believe, and John's going to go to his argument on Pinterest. That will be at 12 o'clock. And your next session will be on taking medicine. So I will hang out here for questions if anybody has any. But again, my name is Gina, and I just appreciate your time. And I hope you guys can get out there and get out there. Thank you.